and gentlemen of the internet, and welcome to the book report here on the Random Pink Guy channel. Book report is a show where I talk about and review books, books of all kind. I'm talking science fiction, fantasy, thrillers, mysteries, and even nonfiction. I found these books interesting, and I think you'll find them interesting too. I am Daniel, your guide into the world of literature. Now, for this review, not that I change the pace of the season, I've been reviewing a lot of science fiction, and it's becoming kind of oversaturated. I didn't want to make you think that's all I reviewed, so I decided to shift into the world of fantasy. Historical fantasy, particularly. It's fantasy light. Now, this story, I'll tell you about it. For, for your consideration, I bring you a story set in the land of the rising sun. Story complete with samurai, ninjas, warrior monks, intrigue, revenge, and star-crossed lovers. I bring you the Tales of Hattori, Book One, Across Nightingale Four, by Leanne Hearn. So Across the Nightingale Four follows two, yes, two main characters. I know, the last series I reviewed followed a bunch. We're getting simpler this time. So the two characters we follow are Kayede, a daughter of a lord, whose life is currently not her own. She feels like a caged bird. And Takeo, young man who's seeking revenge against the man who killed his people. He's got an Inigo Montoya complex. So the story starts out following Takeo because that's the way things are. Now, Ta Takeo, born as Shimasu, grows up in a village full of underground Japanese Christians called the Hidden. Now, they don't come out quite say that they are Christian, but they're strong hints. They also don't use the words samurai, Buddhist, shinobi, slash ninja. But it's pretty freaking obvious what the characters are when they when they mention these other things. They call them the warrior class. Or the enlightened one. So, one day Taki, or at the time he's Tomasu, is coming back from picking mushrooms in the, in the mountains. Not magic mushrooms, like shiitake. And he, he's on his way back to the village and he sees it's on fire. And there's bodies everywhere. Now, it turns out their local lord, Iida Sadamu, lord of the Tohan, doesn't like the hidden there, wiping them out. And he's in fact doing it Personally, he's actually wiping that person. Now, my thoughts are, he got tired of them always knocking on his castle doors saying, Lord Ida, have you heard about our Lord and Savior, the Jesus? And, you know, he's like, I mean, maybe he's like, they're going to break next to the Mormons and Jehovah's Witnesses. I just don't want to deal with that. So he's wiping them out. Now, Tomasi is freaking out, as rightly so, because he saw his Seth part is dead, and he, he's while in the village, he bumps into Ida and knocks him off his horse, which is a big no-no. So, Tomasu is freaked out really so for unhorsing the Lord of the Tohan. And he turns off in the forest with three guys falling behind him. While he's running, he's grabbed by a hooded man who saves his life by killing one of the his pursuers by cutting off his head and cutting off the, one of the other guys' arm. And he tells um, Tomasu, come with me if you want to leave. Tomasu goes with him, and we learn that this guy is Otori Shigeru. Lord Otori Shigeru, in fact. In fa and we find out that he is the arch nemesis to Ida Sanomi. He is the Professor X to the Magneto. He is the Kirk to the Khan. I could go on. So he tells him, listen, kid, you can't go back to that village. Well, the kid's kind of, because he's supposed to be like 16, he's like, dude, you can't go back. Come with me. So, Sugero basically takes him with him to go back to his home city of Hagi. And a couple things happen on the way back. First thing is, Sugero's like, okay, you can't have Tomasu, because that name is very much a hidden name, so I'm choosing your name, Takeo. Another thing happens is Takeo loses his, his ability to speak for a while, partly due to PTSD, partly due to something else we'll get into later. And thirdly, we get some world building and backstory. See, this region of Japan is ruled by three clans. 
the east through the Tohan, led by the Ilasanamu. In the middle country is governed by the Otori, Tigero's clan. And the third region in the west is ruled by the Seishu, who are a confederation of families. They're not really like the way the Tohan or the Tori, they're kind of a loose confederation. And about ten years prior, the Otori lost a major battle called the Egahara, where they were betrayed by their their longtime allies, Naguchi, and they lost half of their half of the middle country. And Sugiro lost his inheritance. Basically, he couldn't inherit the leadership of the clan and was given to his uncles, which he should have rightly inherited because his dad died in the middle of battle. And that's how things work. But Yida wasn't having any of it because he's an upstart. So, when they're about halfway to Hagi, they run into a lady when they have Lady Marayama. Now, Lady Marayama is the ruler of Marayama. I know, it's redundant. And Marayama is very special because it's one of the largest the Seishu domains, and it's the only domain to be passed down from mother to daughter. And she's on her way to see her daughter, who is a, hot, is a hostage in the Yama, the Tohan capital. So, eventually they get back to Hagi. At this point, Jiro reveals, I'm planning to adopt you to Takeo and make you my heir. And everyone's like, the fuck? And, you know, he, he starts pursuing his uncle, saying, hey, can we adopt him? And while he's like, we need to educate you, because if you're going to be my heir, you need to be, you know, be smart. Now we switch over to Kaede. Now, Kaede is the eldest daughter of Lord Shirakawa of the Seishu. And she's currently being held as a hostage by the Naguchi, who are now serving the Tohan. She's been there since she was about seven. So one day while she's, you know, doing stuff, she's returning a knife to the captain of Naguchi's guard, Urai Daichi. He's also another Seishu. And now what happens is one one of his guards, when she's not looking, takes a, a grab at Kaede. But she doesn't take the kind of an accident, you know, out of fear, stabs him in the neck. Doesn't kill him. But Arai hears the screams of both her and the guard, comes up, goes, shit, grabs the knife out of her hand, and cuts the guy's throat. Turns her and says, no, listen. I'm taking the fall for this. He was he was groping you, trying to rape you, and I just killed him. Don't mention the knife. I had the knife. So they go for, before Naguchi, and he's like, um, yeah, Captain Arai, um, I no longer need your services, and you should go back to your lands in the West, which kind of pisses him off. And he turns to Kaede, he's like, as for you, I think it's about time we should marry you off. You're like, what, 14, 15? Keep in mind, this is the Middle Ages. And he arranges a wedding with one of his retainers, his men, who actually dies about a week before the wedding takes place. He got really drunk and had a seizure at his own bachelor party. And this gives Kaede the reputation of being cursed, you know. She brings death to men who desire her. He shoots back to Takio, who is still mute. Shigeru is still trying to pursue adoption, claiming that Takio is a distant relative. So one night while they're sleeping, Takio hears a noise outside the window. He turns to Shigeru. His voice comes back and says, hey. Well, Shigeru, someone's outside climbing up the wall. So they get the drop on the assassin, who promptly falls out the window, hits his head on a stone in the garden, and goes to Nakoma and die. Shigeru suspects the assassin might be part of a shinobi group called the Tribe. Again, they don't use the word shinobi or ninja. We find out a bit about the Tribe later, and his punch turned out to be true, when a friend of his by the name of Muto Kenji shows up and says... Yeah, you you know you just the, you guys just killed the best assassin in all this, all these <clears throat> all this part of Japan, and he look, and he takes a look at Tage goes, you actually might be one of us. <clears throat> and he takes a look at his hands and his face goes, yeah, you're clearly part of the tribe. And not only that, you're part of one of the families that is the assassination group. You're part of <clears throat> the Kakuda. Now Kenji kind of goes into into this exposition of what the tribe are. There are five families. The two main ones are the Muto and the Kakuto. And they all have they have kind of funky ninja powers. I'm not talking Naruto funky ninja powers. I'm talking about more kind of realistic ones. They have like super hearing, super reflexes. They're quick learners. But they also have some of those fantastic ones, putting this in the fantasy category. 
They had the ability to temporarily turn invisible, create an after image, knock out people by looking in the eyes. So he, t he goes to Shigeru and says, hey, listen, I really need to take him with me because he needs to learn how to use these skills. And Shigeru's like, no, 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 he's staying here. I'm going to adopt him. And Kenny's like, fine, if you're going to adopt him, I'm going to trade him here. So Shigeru hears about a rumor that Eid is building a Nightingale 4 in his in his castle in Indiyama and he to prevent help him prevent from being assassinated. So he's like, I want to I'm, I'm interested in this. Let's, let's build one here. Let's replace the floors with that. And Takeo becomes obsessed with obsessed with getting past the floor without waking the birds. Because apparently every time you step on it, it chirps. Now in the in late summer they get they finally get a a message back from the uncle to say, let's talk about this adoption thing. So they go to, to Hagi Castle where they're waiting, and Takeo over here is that they're the ones who hired the assassin to kill Chieru, although they don't make it obvious when they come back out. And they say, okay, you're, if you want to adopt him, we have some strings attached. One of them is that you have to marry Lady Shirakawa, you know, Kaede. In order to seal a a alliance and a peace deal with the Tohan. And he's kind of okay, fine, I will do this. It's at this point that Noguchi informs Kaede that, yeah, you're going to be married to Shigeru. And that you'll be traveling to this rendezvous point to meet up with Yotori with Lady Mariyama. So when she gets back to her room, she finds out she has a new handmaid who, by the name of Shizuku. We learn that Shizuka is a Muto and Kenji's niece. She's also technically Takeo's cousin. So while they're there, Lady Matayama decides that kind of needs some training. So she says, Shizuka, you go, you train her. And then she gets some training. One day after training, she sees Takeo right up. And she gets like the biggest girl boner. She's like, I want him. And you know, it's kind of love at first sight. So, after their meeting, and they're delayed by rain, Shigeru's like, I need to go to Tadayama, which is the, like this, it was the, like a sacred mountain that was originally part of the Otori, which was given to the Tohan after Yegahara. He says, I need to go there because my brother is buried there. I need to pay him respects. His brother, Takashi, was killed the year before by Tohan. And he's kind of pissed that he didn't do anything about it. So, he goes to Teyama to do his respects. He also goes to drop off a Chekhov's gun to the abbot of, of the temple. And they head to Inuyama, the capital of the Tohan. On the way to Inuyama, Shigeru confides in Sakya that he knew his dad was Kukuta Asamu, like the best assassin ever, who was killed a little before Take was born, but they don't explain why yet. So, he says, that's kind of why I came to get you. But it's not the only reason. So they start planning a, pl a plan of attack. They decide that they're going to take out Ida. It's the only way that everyone gets what they want. And they're told by Shizuka, before they, the day they go to meet the Ida, that, yeah, arrives like, really close. But he won't come and attack unless Ida's dead and things are in turmoil. Because, basically... Rai got angry because Noguchi, you know, he kicked him out and he raised an army and took his revenge on Noguchi and was planning to help take out the Tohan, but they needed to basically cut the head off the dragon. So after going to the meeting where Takeo learns about the 904 and studies it, they go, okay, tonight's tonight, we're going to take this out. And know you're thinking, you know, everyone gets what they want. He just taken out. Shigeru gets Lady Mangyama. Takeo gets Kaede. You know, they meet up with the Rai and defeat the Tohan and bring peace to the three countries. Wrong. This is the first book, so that's not going to happen. Instead, Takeo's on his way to check out the walls with, of the castle with Kenji and gets jumped and kidnapped by members of the Kuda family. And basically saying, we don't want you to die because you're too much of a value. Kenji, after they, they basically hide him away in one of their, their safe houses in Inuyama, says, I didn't think it was going to work anyway. It's a stupid idea and it's better to have you alive now. I guess pissed because he's like, I told him I was going to kill Ida and you you 
Rob me of my revenge. And then at this point, Takeo gets to meet the head of his family, a cousin of his father, by the name of Kotaro. He's like, you know, why do you want to leave? And he's kind of angry at him. Afterwards, Kenji's daughter, Yuki, basically says, listen, I have something for you that I smuggled in. Shigeru basically gave Takeo his sword, Jato, which is supposed to be like the symbol of the Otori clan. It's one, it's like something the leader is supposed to use. And basically says, I, I didn't think you would abandon me. Afterwards, he basically confronts her. Listen, I'll make you a deal. You let let me go in and get Lord Shigeru and bring down, bring him, free him, or I kill myself. I was like, I don't want to lose all those talents, all that you know, ability. So I agree. So Takeo, along with Yuki and, and Ken, Kenji, sneak into the castle, free Shigeru, who's being held by ropes, and. Uh, swimming across the river, Shiro's like, listen, I'm, I'm in bad shape, so I'm not going to make it. So here's the deal. You're going to help me take my life honorably. I want my head taken to Teriyama, and I want you to promise that you're going to bring Ida's head to my grave at Teriyama. Who's like, I will. And he uses Jato to basically cut his head off. He hands <clears throat> his head to Yuki, and, says, and she goes up to Teriyama, and he, along with Kenji, sneak back in the castle... At which point we switch to Kayede, who's just like, oh, fuck, what's happening? I'm clearly cursed. I'm just just kill myself. At this point, Ida comes in. He's all drunk. He's like, yeah, I defeated a toy. Woo! He's like, hey, you're pretty hot. You know, it would suck to die a virgin. So he starts, like, coming on to her. And then she's like, pulls out a knife. Wah! In the head. And, you know, Takeo eventually comes in about a few minutes later. He goes, aw. I wanted to kill him myself. I was like, eh, he's dead. And I get to take his head. And he turns around and he's like, I thought you were pretty hot. Like, I thought you were pretty hot. And they do it. Afterwards, they, they take the head. They meet up with Kenji and Suzuka, who's been sitting by uh, his side. And they fight their way through the castle, which burns down because someone dropped a torch. You're not supposed to have torches in wood buildings. Anyway, Takeo takes the head, rides off to Terayama. On his way, he meets up with some of the monks from there who are, you know, forming an army and are fighting the Tohan. And he says, hey, hey, look what I got. I got to eat his head. They're like, no way. That's so cool. They go, well, or, or they're Japanese. They go, Sugoi. I, I know they're not, not. <clears throat> So he takes the head to Shigeru's grave, as he's supposed to. Me, I was like, you know, he's going to become like, pretty legendary because, you know, he was and you're going to be homeless because you're a badass, and he went in and fought Ida. He, he didn't admit that he didn't kill you, but he's like, yeah, yeah. At which point, Arai shows up. He's like, I need, we need to talk now. And we learn that Arai wants him to hook up with, wants Takeo to hook up with Kaede to help form an alliance. Basically, he's like, he's like, listen, he was supposed to marry her anyway, and she is the heir to, to Mariyama, because at Lady Umaniyama died, and <clears throat> she's, Kaede is her next legal heir. So, like, listen, you hook up with her, get Mariyama, and I will support you in your campaign against the uncles, because most of the clans are back here anyway. He's like, I already made a deal with the tribe, because I owe them, because they let me go help Shigeru. He's like, 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 who the hell are these tribe people I keep hearing of? And he's kind of pissed. He's like, why are you going to go? You're like, no, no, you owe me allegiance. He's like, he kind of, like, was very passive-aggressive. So, Shizuka says, they're coming for you. You need to go with them or you're dead. <clears throat> so, he goes to uh, Kaede and says, Listen, this isn't going to work out because I got to go with my fam family. And she's like, but why? And he's like, but I have to. And it turns out that he has a special code ability. Let's keep, let's him look in people's eyes and put them to sleep. And... She, she knocks out Sue. He's like, okay, go and learn how to, like, master this. So he meets up with Kenji and Kotaro, and they're like, okay, we're going to take you to your training. And the rest of the story is continued in part two, Grass for his Pose, which I will be reviewing next time. Thank you guys for watching. If you like this video, subscribe to get more content, and check out our other content. It should be next to me. Yeah, right there and there. Oh, my name is Dan. Thank you for watching. Peace.